What's up, everybody? Woo! Man, I'm feeling some kind of way right now. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a few hours now, ever since I initially saw the, um, the new matrix for the loan level pricing adjustments. And I've been thinking about it. I thought about just doing a real official live video, you know, um, from the podcast. So I just want to come live real quick while I had a little bit of a time, a little bit of time, and just kind of give a brief microcosm overview. So the LLPA, the loan level um, pricing adjustments, basically in a nutshell. Uh, with every conventional mortgage, if you have a credit score that's, um, say, 680 up to like 780, basically if you have a good credit score or you have a excellent credit score, because 780 is considered excellent, then if you go to get a conventional mortgage and you're going to put down 15, say 20%, um, for multiple reasons you would do that, right? then they're going to, the mortgage company, they're going to hit you with a pricing adjustment and basically hit you with a premium or hit you with an extra cost uh, for your mortgage. So if you have a good credit score, excellent credit score, 680 up to like 780, above 700 credit score with the conventional loan, this all goes into effect on May 1st, then you're going to be hit with the uh, extra a pricing adjustment an increase uh, in in the mortgage loan, so it can add from what I've seen anywhere from like forty dollars to sixty dollars extra per month onto your regular conventional mortgage, and that's with you putting down fifteen twenty percent, right? And the matrix that I saw even looked appeared to be as much as you could still put down twenty five percent and get hit with this uh, pricing adjustment. However, on the other side, the flip side of that, if you have a, well, by standards called a poor credit score, 640 and below, the adjust, adjustment on the pricing uh, that they gave the people with the good credit score, that's going to be passed to you uh, as like a subsidy, and it's going to give those with lower credit score, 640 and below, uh, to give them a discount or a break in the pricing adjustment for uh, a mortgage that's more than 15 years. So this only applies to mortgages that are more than 15 years. So a 20 year mortgage, a 30 year mortgage. As well as if you haven't been paying attention, the new product that's coming onto the market now is gonna be 40 year mortgages. So basically those that can afford a mortgage with bigger down payments, better credit scores, if you're putting out 15 to 20 up to maybe 25%, down on the on the mortgage on the loan you'll be hit with a pricing adjustment that is basically going to subsidize and help give a discount to those that have a 640 or below credit score okay so I'm gonna give my kind of general thoughts about that in general what I think is I think it's a a sham it's a debacle it's a absolute horrendous ideal but our current administration is, um, I guess you could say they are incentivized to continue to have people think that they are really trying to help you, you know, financially and help you, you know, where, where you are in your, you know, your, your financial status or whatever, you know. So my thoughts kind of about it is if you have a 640 or below credit score, the reason why your credit score is low is simply this. The two largest portion of the credit analysis or the credit uh, the credit uh, scoring system is 35% of it is your payment history. So 35% of it, a huge percentage of your score is based off of do you pay your 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 bills? Do you pay your creditors on time? And then 30% of that is how much of your credit you're being you're utilizing. Your, so credit utilization. So if you're over 30%, you got your cards and everything, your credit you know maxed out or 50 60 70 percent and you max it out your your credit of course your credit score is going to suffer so those two areas credit 
35% payment history, 30% of your utilization. So if your credit score is 640 and below, it's because you haven't been paying people on time and you've been improperly using your, you know, using your credit. You've been using too much of your credit. You know, you've been maxing out your credit. So that's why your credit score suffers and is low, right? And you know that late payments can stay on your credit file for up to seven years, right? And then if you file for bankruptcy and got all this other stuff going on. So in a nutshell, to me, rather than really educate people on how they can better uh, manage their financial situation, manage their finances, how they can better, you know, um, get better, a, a better credit score and stuff like that. Our government decides they're going to take from the people that's being wise and managing their their uh, resources well and that they have better credit scores, good to excellent credit scores. They're going to penalize them for putting more money down. Because think about it, the less money you put down on a mortgage, on a mortgage, yes, your payment's going to be higher, right? But also, typically, people uh, have these mortgages that are lasting longer, which ultimately makes money for the mortgage lenders and those, the banks or whoever is loaning the money out, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't incentivize people to pay mortgages off early, and it doesn't incentivize people to put larger lump sums of money down on a mortgage in order to. Uh, lessen the sting on the interest that they're going to pay over time. So I, I'm, I'm adamantly, I feel some kind of way about it. I think it's horrendous to do that because ultimately we already know there's always going to be a pool of people among us that don't necessarily manage their finances well and have good credit scores, right? We're going to always have a population of people there and there's already products in place to help people uh, that have lower credit scores or that don't have strong credit files. But to actually tell the people that do have strong credit files, over 700 credit scores, putting large lump sums of money down on a credit, on a, on a home for a home, for the purchase of a home, that you're going to have to subsidize, right, and have an increase in your price adjustment, an increased price adjustment on your mortgage rate for a conventional 20 to 30 year mortgage loan in order to subsidize those that are not been managing their, their finances well is absolutely, it's, it's ludicrous to me. It, it, it makes no sense and it does not help. The two groups of people that it, in my opinion, negatively affects, affects more are black people and Hispanics, you know, because they've done, there's plenty of data and research being done out there that, that tells you that typically um, those are the two groups that tend to have um, the lower and not so good credit scores. So. It's just to pump you up to tell you, oh, you know, we're going to help give you a break. So if you get a conventional loan, you put 3% down, you got 97%, uh, you know, loan to value, and you're financing 97% of the money that you're borrowing, you know, we're going to give you a subsidy by taking money from those that are doing well, and we're going to give you a little bit of a break. But here's what they're not telling you, right? First of all, 97%, if you're already uh, financing 97%, and you're in a low income bracket and you don't have a great credit score, you're 64, 640 and below, then you're not gonna see them with no 15 year mortgages. So they're gonna, chances are we're looking at 30 year and now the new, uh, you know, the new product that they're introducing, a 40 year mortgage. So these people are gonna be paying double, you know, it's like in interest, right? So here's the other thing on the back side. There's a secondary pricing adjustment that they don't necessarily advertise and put up front and tell you about. And in that secondary pricing adjustment, there are certain categories that um, that will put you in a increase in your um, in your pricing adjustment from the discount that they supposedly had given you up front. One of those is um, your debt to income ratio. So they already know, they've done the studies, they already know that people that tend to have lower credit scores and not strong credit files have higher debt to income ratio. So if you got a over 40% debt to income ratio, you're gonna get hit on the back side, you know, in in the hidden fees that they don't tell you about up front, that's gonna pretty much wash away or cancel out the uh, pricing adjustment, you know, subsidy that you gave you up front. As well as one of the other areas is subordinate financing subordinate financing so if you don't have a strong credit score you're 640 and below 
right, and you fall in subordinate financing or subpar financing, then they're going to hit you on the backside with another additional pricing adjustment increase that once again, it negates and it, and it, it pretty much washes out. It, it, it makes a wash of the first initial um, subsidy decrease or subsidy, um, you know, discount that you got up front. So don't get hoodwinked and bamboozled, bamboozled folks. Invest your money. Save, invest, 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 get your credit files strong and un up, but now it's forcing people, if they're going to get a conventional loan, to have to put down 30%, 40%, or 50% in order to not get hit with this increased pricing adjustment to help subsidize people that are in lower, you know, credit, got weak credit files and lower credit scores. So it's, it's absolutely insane to me. Rather than get your credit file right, handle your finances right, live beneath your means, pay your creditors on time, don't max out your credit scores. Rather than doing that, don't max out your, your credit cards and your, and your revolving credit things and manage what you have and keep your debt to income ratio low. Rather than do that, we're going to tell you, oh, we're just going to help you out, you know, we, we know things are hard. It's just another form of, of, a, of a freaking participation trophy, trophy, financially speaking. And it's absolutely ridiculous because at, at the end of the day, it doesn't help people, especially when you hoodwink them and you bamboozle them and you're telling them you're giving them a subsidy up front, but then you basically take it away from them on the back end because most people are not astute enough to read past what you initially tell them you know, through the initial excitement and the fact that you're trying to help them, right? So they're not going to be astute enough to look on the backside and see that you're taking that right from them and then you're still adding on the back end an increase for them because their debt to income ratio is higher and they're not, you know, they're falling in subordinate financing in that category. You know, one thing that I re remembered and reminded myself of was back in the day, you know, my first job, I was in sales. And shout out to Howard Kessler. He he trained me and taught me in sales, right? And <clears throat> some of the things that we used to do back then, this is like back in the you know the late 80s, right? When I was in sales and I really learned learned a lot of the strong principles about selling, closing, qualifying, all of that stuff, overcoming objections. What we would do, I sold pianos and organs. We would add a fee on the back end that the client or the customer could not see or did not know about we would add a $200 delivery fee, right? So then when I would get sit down in front of the customer and I would tell them, hey, if I can get you $100 off rather than $2,000, get you this organ for $1,900, if I can get my boss to approve that, would you buy it today? And then I just shut up and, and wait till they give me an answer. And if they say yes, then I say, well, I have to call my boss and get that approved, right? You make it seem like I'm going over and, and above and beyond to help them out, right? It's all a part of the, sh the sales and the, and the sham of it, of the whole thing. But I already put in the extra $200 that they can't see because it's a hidden cost that I put in when I put it typed in on, the, on the computer and I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm a student at doing this so I can do it real fast. They never see me doing it. Then when I give them a $100 discount, I call the boss, which by the way, I'm not really calling the boss. It's what we call a boss call. So it was a fake call. I would call another store. Everybody was already trained to know that when you get a boss call, when you ask for the boss, Dean Flacco, that it was a fake phone call. And some of the newer associates would listen in on some of the associates like myself, who was really good at making fake boss calls. They would listen in and learn on how to make a boss call. So the customer sitting there thinking that I'm actually talking to the boss and I'm actually talking to an associate pretending to be the boss. They don't even say nothing. I'm having a false conversation, padded $200 into the price, gave them a $100 discount. So I'm still $100 above, you know, the actual retail price and what I sold this organ and it's this piano to them for. So this to me is the same type of deal. It's one of those types of deals where they tell you they're giving you a discount up front, but on the back end, they hit you with a, a, an increase in your pricing adjustment for having a higher debt to income ratio, which typically comes with people who have lower 640 and below credit scores 
and then they also hit you with another fee, an increase in your pricing adjustment because you, are sub, you fall within the subordinate financing category. So everything that they told you they was giving you up front, what front is a sham anyway because they're hitting you with on the back end to, to, to negate the, the supposed discount that they're giving you. So the LLPA that's, you know, is going to affect the loan level pricing adjustments that's going to affect, like I say, basically what it's for is those that have 700 and above credit scores up to 780, they will get hit with a pricing adjustment if they have a good credit score, you know, good to excellent credit score, and they're putting down a large lump sum of money, 15, 20%, even as high as 25%, they're going to get hit with a pricing adjustment and increase that can add 40 to $60 a month for a loan on a mortgage that's uh, more than 15 years uh, in length and time on a conventional mortgage loan. And you know, you all tell me what y'all think about that. I think it's absolutely absurd to bail people out and not give them the truth about, hey, you need to get your credit in order. You need to get your finances in order. You need to keep your debt to income ratio low. You need to live beneath your means. Tell people to be responsible with their money rather than offer them some made up, convoluted, for nargo nargo, made up discount that you're saying you're giving them and you're not on a conventional loan. And why wouldn't you want them to get an FHA loan if it's also gonna provide 3% down and 97% loan to value, why? because typically the conventional loan is not going to be insured. So if they do default, there is no insurance on the backside that can pay that loan off if they default on it. The government agencies, Fannie Mac and whoever, is not going to be on the hook for it. So then what happens? These people are still going to be on the hook because they're going to get taken to court. They're going to still say you still owe that money that you defaulted on because there's no insurance backing it through a government program. So these people that get these conventional loans, subpar, sub subordinate financing, you know, this whole debacle, and then they default at 10, 15, 20 years up the road, they still could lose their house. Because typically people that fall in that 640 and below credit scores and things like that, typically you're not gonna see them investing in the stock market. You're not gonna see them with a lot of savings you know, that's why they don't have 15%, 20%, 25% to put down. You're not going to see them, you know, in that level of, you know, handle, how to, whoo, whoo child, whoo child. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. I think if you fall prey to this, you're getting bamboozled, bamboozled. you're getting hoodwinked. Get your credit scores right. If you have not been investing in the stock market the last two years, while the market's been down, while we came out of COVID, right? We've been in a recession. I don't care what nobody keep trying to tell you, you know, the recession is coming. We've been in one. If you have not been saving and investing your money, there's ETFs, there's mutual funds, it's all kind of places. There's banks right now offering money market accounts with five to five and five and a quarter percent interest that they're paying on money market accounts. If you have not been investing your money the last two years, you're, you're, you're missing out. You are missing out. That's how you negate this. Get your credit utilization with your revolving accounts under 30%. Pay off your credit cards and your revolving accounts. Pay them down. Pay your personal loans off. I've been saying this for months, folks. Get your credit utilization under 30% and you'll automatically see an increase in your credit score. Right? Get it down to 3 to 10%. Get it under 10%. And you'll automatically see a boost, a jump, a spike in your credit score. And then invest your money. Don't just put it in a savings, a regular savings account. Put it in a high yield money market account. There are banks all over, whatever city you live in, that's offering offering premium interest rates with secured, with with this, with your principal being secured, four and a quarter, four and a half, five percent, five and a quarter percent interest rates 
on principally secured accounts, money markets, and high yield savings accounts. Put your money in something like that. And in three to five years from now, you'll have enough for a down payment. And stop living above your means. What you earn. The folk that you're trying to impress don't even have like you anyway. Half the people we're trying to impress with buying expensive stuff don't even like us. So you're trying to impress people that ain't even fond of you. And the folk that you think jealous of you, they ain't jealous. They're laughing at you. So get your credit right and pay folk on time. Actually, if you go like four or five years, those late payments, they start having less effect on your credit score anyway. It's still going to affect you for seven years. But pay on time. Pay ahead of time. Right? Pay ahead of time. Stop being late. And, and you could, and you instantly, you'll see within 12 months, you'll start seeing a, a boost in the spike in your credit score. So don't get hoodwinked by these people. This administ current administration keep trying to tell you, we here to help you. When they roll out a product like this, the loan level pricing adjustments, and try to tell you we helping you when, when, you, when really, I could say something, I ain't gonna say that because I'm gonna lie. They really doing something else to you so that's just my opinion about it i'm about to sign out i got a call coming in that i need to take i hope you all find some value in this will y'all send a brother some stars it's been a while since somebody pressed that button and sent me some stars will y'all buy some stars and help help our brother out to continue to make this kind of content to help you to help other people excel right send a brother some stars but give me your your thoughts about the loan level pricing adjustments and the things I just explained. There's a previous, uh, on my Facebook page, there's a previous post that I posted about it. You, If you want more information, there's a link there. You can just press that link. Takes you to Fatty Mae. It gives you more in-depth details in all the charts and everything on the new matrix of the loan level pricing adjustments. And see it for yourself, all right? So, thanks for, for watching. Tell me what you all think about it and if you feel the same way or if you think this is good you think they really doing you know people with low credit scores a favor you know by giving them a false you know discount on their pricing for a conventional mortgage 15 20 year i mean over 15 years so you'd be looking at 20 30 year like i say now rolling out 40 year mortgages <sighs> look don't fall for this don't fall for this stuff folk Get your money right. Get your investment. Start saving your money. Get your credit. Get your credit right. All right, pe people. I'm out. I got. I got to go, y'all. But thanks for watching. And go back and watch. Watch this post, the permanent thing. Watch it from the beginning. And give me your thoughts. Put it in the comments, you know, below. And I'm gonna go back and read them. And, and maybe we can have some dialogue and some conversation.